the main purpose of the endosperm it is to provide nutrition to the developing embryo zygote was formed when the male gamete fused with the egg cell it resulted in the formation of a diploid zygote in the root tip you have the actively dividing cells that is the meristematic cells so in monocotyledonous embryo there is an embryonal axis which divides the embryo into two halves hello everyone welcome to today's session on sexual reproduction in flowering plants i'm dr divya faculty in biology vidyashram pre university college mysore temple of excellence so in today's session we'll study about the post fertilization events so before beginning we'll brush about what we had studied in the previous session so in the previous session we learned about the different outbreeding devices that are adapted by the plant in order to prevent self pollination and to promote cross pollination and we also studied about the self incompatibility which is a best outbreeding device so in order to achieve self incompatibility we learned about the pollen pistil interaction and we also learned about the very important technique that is used in plant breeding which is a very very useful outbreeding device which is called as artificial hybridization so and we also learned about the second uh, event that occurs in the sexual reproduction of a flowering plant that is double fertilization so once the double fertilization is achieved the plant will or the flowers will move on to the next um, fertilization event which is called as the post fertilization event so whatever events occur after the double fertilization it is called as the post fertilization event so events which takes place in a flowering plant after double fertilization it is called as the post fertilization event so in post fertilization event also there are some important uh, steps or events that are being involved so the first one is it is the development of the endosperm from the primary endosperm cell and next is the development of the embryo from the zygote and the next important event is the development of the seed from the ovule so once the zygote is formed the next step is the development of the seed from the ovule that is present inside the ovary next is development of the fruit from the ovary so the ovule will give rise to the seed and the ovary will give rise to the fruit so whatever say for example you take an apple inside the seeds you have from where as the seeds come it is from the ovule from where as the pulp of the apple or the um, what is that the fruit has come it has come from the ovary so each of the steps will study in detail one by one so moving on to the post fertilization structures and the event so here first we'll learn about the endosperm so the primary endosperm cell it is formed as a result of triple fusion and after the triple fusion it will undergo repeated division and it will produce a triploid endosperm tissue so this triploid endosperm tissue it is very very important as it is the endosperm is the one which provides the nutrition to the developing embryo so as i told you the primary endosperm cell it is formed as a result of the triple fusion so here the in the first step in po, in um, post fertilization event it is the development of the endosperm from the primary endosperm cell so from where did we get the primary endosperm cell in your previous session also we had studied about this so the primary endosperm cell is formed as a result of triple fusion that is what is this triple fusion 
I told you one of the male gamete that enters into the ovule, it will fuse with the polar nuclei that is present in the central cell. So, in the central cell, you will have two polar nuclei. So, they will, the male gamete which is haploid will go and fuse with the two polar nuclei that is also haploid as well. Therefore, the triple fusion will occur. So, when the triple fusion occurs, the primary endosperm cell gets formed. So, this primary endosperm cell again it will undergo repeated division and it will produce a triploid endosperm tissue. So, the main purpose why the endosperm is formed and always remember the endosperm should always be formed before the formation of the embryo. Why? Because it is the endosperm that is the one which provides nutrition to the embryo. So, as soon as you reach home, your mother, she will cook food and keep it ready for you. Why? She will know that it is it's already ready. She know that you will reach home hungry, you will have to uh, replenish yourself. You have to eat something for that. Similarly here, the seed or the ov ovule will or the ovary, it will know that already the seed is being already the um, what is it embryo is being developed so before the development of the embryo before the completion of the embryo development itself the endosperm should be formed so therefore the main purpose of the endosperm it is to provide nutrition to the developing embryo so that is why before the formation of the embryo itself the endosperm will already be formed inside the ovule or the ovary so, it is the, the main purpose of endosperm is to provide nutrition to the developing embryo. So, endosperm once it is formed it can be of two types. One is it can be free nuclear or it can be cellular. So, free nuclear endosperm is the most common type of endosperm that is formed when compared to cellular endosperm. So, when the endosperm is formed after the triple fusion the endosperm can either be in free nuclear form or it can be in cellular form. And out of this, these two, free nuclear form or the free nuclear endosperm is the most common type of endosperm development that can be observed inside the ovule. So, let us see what the free nuclear endosperm and the cellular endosperm are. So, this is the diagram which shows the structure wherein you have the two synergids. So, these two synergids, they are degenerated. Degenerate. Why do they degenerate? Because after fertilization, what was the, remember what was the function of the synergid? only to direct the entry of the pollen tube through the micropylar end so that one of the male gamete can be released near the egg apparatus and one can be released near the uh, polar nuclei so that the fusion can occur. So, now uh, in the double fertilization itself all the fusion all that has taken place the fertilization is done. So, that is why the synergids are now of no use that is why in the embryo sac later in the post fertilization event in the embryo sac the synergids will get destroyed or it will get degenerated that is why here the synergid gets degenerated and what will remain only the zygote will remain. So, remember what is the zygote? How did the zygote form? The one of the male gamete it fused with the egg cell and it re resulted in the formation of the zygote. So, now it is the zygote which is deployed. Why it is deployed? Because the male gamete so, why is it deployed? Because the male gamete, it was haploid, it fused with the egg cell that was also haploid. Therefore, you have a deployed zygote now. So, that is why the zygote is deployed. So, you have the 
synergids they will degenerate so soon after double fertilization during the formation of the endosperm and the uh, zygote and the embryo this particular synergids they will degenerate why because they are of no use now that is why they will degenerate and only the zygote that was formed how did the zygote form the one of the male gamete it fused one of the haploid male gamete fused with the haploid egg cell and it formed a diploid zygote and this particular cell it will form primary endosperm cell so this is the one which give rise to the endosperm again these primary endosperm cells they will divide and it will form the endosperm tissue which is triploid endosperm tissue why is this endosperm tissue triploid here i told again i will explain to you here you have two polar nuclei in this particular cell you have the two polar nuclei which is n n and one of the male gamete will come and fuse with it one of the male gamete will come and fuse with it which is also haploid now you have triploid it becomes triploid that is why this is a triploid primary endosperm cell will form which will again undergo uh, divisions to produce the endosperm so this endosperm it provides nutrition to the zygote or whatever and here whatever antipodal cells will are there they will also degenerate antipodal cells so these will also degenerate so don't worry in one of the diagram if if the uh, synergids and the egg apparatus are shown up and in one of the diagram it is shown down don't worry about that why because i have always told you where the micropyle is there micropylar opening is there there you'll have the synergid and the egg cell and on the other side that is the chalazal end you will have the antipodal so however you draw when you write you have to when you write about the fusion and all the fusion of the gametes you have to be careful that is it so if it is inverted or if it is vice versa don't worry about that so here so the a primary endosperm cell will be formed and the main purpose of the endosperm is to provide nutrition to the developing embryo so i told you the endosperm that is formed it can be either free nuclear or it can be cellular so free nuclear endosperm is the most common type of endosperm that is formed so what is this free nu nuclear and cellular we will just look into so as i told you the endosperm they can be either free nuclear or they can be cellular and the free nuclear endosperm is the most common type of endosperm that is uh, formed inside the ovule so free nuclear so you have the endosperm being developed like this so you have the nutritive layer or what so in this particular endosperm the nucleus are free there is no septations in between that is why it is free nuclear endosperm and in the case of and most of the time the endosperm that is formed is a free nuclear type and in cellular endosperm so in cellular endosperm you have the cell walls being formed around the nucleus that is why it is called as cellular endosperm so this is the difference between the free nuclear and the cellular endosperm so this was about endosperm so next we'll move on to once the endosperm is developed the embryo development starts i told you the endosperm development should always be first and or it should be before the development of the or the formation of the embryo because the endosperm is the one which pro provides the nutrition to the developing embryo so moving on to the embryo as i told you here the same thing this particular zygote we will consider the zygote so all this events will take place in the embryo sac or the ovule itself so wherein in this particular case after a double fertilization the synergids 
the synergids, they have degenerated and these, uh, um, what is that, antipodal cells, they have degenerated only the this particular primary endosperm cell and the zygote is needed now. So, now we are talking about the, uh, what is that, zygote. So, zygote, it is deployed. So, the zygote will undergo again division. So, here the embryo, sorry, uh, the embryo, it is a deployed cell and it develops from the zygote. So, from this particular zygote, so how was the zygote formed? Zygote was formed when the male gamete fused with the egg cell. It resulted in the formation of a deployed zygote. So, now this zygote, it will again undergo uh, like division and it will form the two celled zygote. It will form two cells. So now this zygote which is deployed, it will again uh, divide to form two cell stage. So in embryo development, embryo usually develops from the zygote. So how this embryo development takes place in the from the zygote, we are, that is what we are studying now. So embryo under that various stages are there. So the stages of embryo development, they are same in both monocot and dicot embryo. So when you observe a monocot embryo and a dicot embryo, structure wise, they are different or morphologically they are different. But when it comes to the stages in the embryo development of the monocot and the dicot, the embryo development in the monocot and the dicot, they are the same. So, various, so uh, this process of uh, is called as the embryogeny. So, embryogeny, it is the stages of the embryo development. So, from where will the embryo develop? The embryo develops from the zygote. So, this, the different stages that are involved in the development of the embryo, it is called as embryogeny. So, in the exam, if they ask you write about embryogeny, then you have to write the stages of the embryo development and if they ask you write about the stages of the embryo development, both are one and the same. So, the embryo development starts with the fertilized egg which is the zygote. What, why it is the fertilized egg? How the fertilization occurred? One of the male gamete which was haploid fused with the egg cell which is also haploid to produce the diploid zygote. This zygote is the one which develops into an embryo. How it will? By taking the nutrition whatever is there from the by various divisions and also by utilizing the nutrition from the endosperm. So, this is the zygote. The same thing. This is the zygote which is diploid. So, the zygote, the embryo development starts with the fertilized egg which is the zygote. The zygote then passes to the two-celled stage. It will undergo division and it will form the two-celled stage. After that, it will again undergo division to form the four-cell stage. Four-cell stage, four-cell stage. The diagram is not there here, but again it will undergo division to form the four cell stage. Again, it will undergo division to form the eight cell stage. So, in the eight cell stage, after that again it will undergo division to form the globular stage. So, can you see here when you look at this here, you can see it is globe like this particular region. This is the embryo now which has developed by the various divisions that are occurred in the diploid zygote. So, here you can see it is globe like that is why it is called as the globular stage. Globular stage. So, it forms after the eight cell stage, the embryo gets converted to the globular stage. Then it end, again, it undergoes division and forms the heart shaped stage. So, if you can see here, now the embryo, it is heart shaped. That is why it is called as heart shaped stage. It is heart shaped. heart shape that is why it is called as heart shaped stage and later on again it undergoes division to form the torpedo stage. So, this is the torpedo stage.
So the embryo before it attains maturity, it uh, undergoes the globular stage, the heart shaped stage and the torpedo stage and later on they become a mature embryo. So finally they become the mature embryo. So I told you the stages. So this stage of embryo development or these division that is the two celled, uh, the uh, eight cell, then the globular, the heart shape, the torpedo stage, all these stages are same both in monocotyledonous seed as well as dicotyledonous seed. What are monocots? Those having only one cotyledon. Dicots, those having two cotyledons. But when it comes to the structure of the embryo in the monocot and the dicot, it is different. So we'll study about the structure of the monocot embryo and the dicot embryo separately. So first we'll study about the structure of a dicotyledonous embryo. So the dicotyledonous embryo, it has the embryonal axis. So what is the embryonal axis? This is the embryonal axis. It divides the dicot embryo into the epicotyle and the hypocotyle. That is why it is the embryonal axis. So the dicotyledonous embryo, it has the following important parts. First one is the embryonal axis. So embryonal axis, it is the main axis of the embryo which divides the embryo into different regions. What are the different regions in this case? It is the epicotyle and the hypocotyle. So next we'll move on to the cotyledons. So this was the embryonal axis, the first structure of the Dicotyledonous embryo, it consists of the embryonal axis. The embryonal axis is the one which, which divides the dicotyledonous embryo into the epicotyle and the hypocotyle region. Next, we'll move on to the cotyledons. So, can you see here there are two cotyledons? Cotyledon 1 or cotyledon 2. Anyway, you can write there are two cotyledons. So, that is why it is a dicot two cotyledons. So these are the cotyledons. So it has two cotyledons and um, the cotyledons are the ones which from which the leaves emerge, from the which the leaves emerge, the first two leaves emerge. So it emerges from the, so you can see as soon as the seeds germinate from the st uh, stem of the, from the germinated region, you can see the first leaf that emerges from, from the germinated region. So that is the with the help of the cotyledon. So for this also the cotyledon will provide nourishment for all this for the development of the leaves and all that. And it helps in food storage and it pro provides nourishment to the developing radical and the plumule. Plumule is the uh, shoot forming region and the radical is the root forming region. So in the shoot forming region, the shoot has to ar arise out from the seed and from the root region, the root has to arise out. So for all this nutrition is required, right? So the cotyledon is the one which provides nutrition for all this. So next we have the epicotyle. So after the cotyledon, we have the epicotyle. So this is the epicotyle region. And then we have the hypocotyle. I told you embryon, embryonal axis is the one which divides the dicotyledonous embryo has the epicotyle and the hypocotyle. So the epicotyle, it is the part of the axis that is present above the cotyledons. So part of the embryonal axis above the cotyledons, it is the epicotyle. Epo, epi means above. So that is why cotyle, cotyledon, the part that is present above the cotyledon, it is the epicotyle. And it always ends or terminates at the plumule. So here you have the plumule. The epicotyle always ends at the plumule. So the region up to the plumule, whatever region is there, that is the epicotyle region. Next you have the hypo, 
hypocotyl. So hypocotyl, it is the part of the embryonal axis that is present below the cotyledon. So those which are present below the cotyledon, it is the hypocotyl region. And next you have, and it terminates at the radical. So the epicotyl terminates at the plumule and the hypocotyl terminates at the radical. Radical. So from the plumule arises the shoot and from the radical arises the root. So that is about the plumule. So plumule is the stem tip and radical is the root tip and there is one more part called as the root cap. So plumule it is the stem tip, the radical it is called as the root tip and the root cap is also present which covers the root tip. So root tip should always be protected, it should be covered. Why? Because in the root tip you have the actively dividing cells that is the meristematic cells or the actively dividing cells being present because the roots they don't stop growing, right? They keep on growing. So where does, does the growth of the root occurs, it usually occurs at the tip of the root. So it has very fragile young cells there. So that is why in order to protect those young cells, the root cap always helps. So this is a root cap. So the dicotyledonous embryo, it has, it has an embryonal axis. The embryonal axis is the one which divides the dicotyledonous embryo into the epicotyl region and the hypocotyl region. So epicotyl region, it is a part of the embryonal axis that is present above the cotyledons and the hypocotyl region is the part of the embryonal axis that is present um, below the cotyledon region. And at the end of the hypocotyl, you have the radical and at the tip of the radical, you have the root cap which covers the root tip or the radical. And next you have the plumule in the epicotyl region which is nothing but the stem tip. It is from that region the stem arises and the first leaf of the uh, seed that has germinated arises. So next moving on to the structure of the monocotyledonous embryo. So the monocotyledonous embryo, even this has the embryonal axis. So here it has the embryonal axis and this embryonal axis divides the monocotyledonous embryo into various regions same like the dicotyledonous embryo. So next we'll study about the structure of a monocotyledonous embryo. So the monocotyledonous embryo, it is made up of the embryonal axis. So embryonal axis is the main axis of the monocotyledonous embryo which again divides it into different regions. So what are the different regions? We have the cotyledon. So in monocot, mono means single cot, it is cotyledon. It has only one cotyledon. That is why it is called as monocotyledon. Here only one seed leaf will is present. Why it is called a seed leaf? Because the cotyledon is the one which helps in the development of the leaf. So here only one seed leaf exists in the case of monocotyledon uh, embryo. So here and that seed leaf is called as the scutellum. So this is the seed leaf. This is the scutellum. So what is the scutellum? Scutellum is the only seed leaf that is present in the cotyledon of the monocotyledonous embryo and it is located at one side of the axis that is it, again you have two axes embryonal axis it is located at one side of the embryonal axis. Next we have the plumule, we have the radical, then we have the coleoriza and we have the coleoptile. We will study about each structure one by one. Then we have the Plumule, which is the shoot tip. So you have the plumule. Then we have the radical. And we have the coleoriza. So coleoriza is the sheath that is that covers the radical and the root cap. Remember, dicotyledonous embryo, there was no coleoriza but we just had the radical and the root cap. But in the case of monocotyledonous 
embryo there is a structure called as the coleorhiza so what is the function of the coleorhiza it it is a layer that covers the radical and the root cap it is a sheath that is enclosing the radical and the root cap it acts as a protective layer in order to protect the radical and the root cap that is the coleorhiza so in monocotyledonous embryo there is one more structure called as the coleorhiza so the coleorhiza is a sheath that encloses the radical and the root cap it acts as a protective layer that protects the radical and the root cap so here you have the radical then you have the root cap and you have the coleorhiza so coleorhiza so coleorhiza is the one which pro protects the radical as well as the root cap and we have one more region called as the coleoptile so the coleoptile it is a sheath enclosing the plumule and the primordial leaf primordial so where is the pr plumule and the leaf primordial present it is present at the other end of the uh, monocotyledonous embryo this end so what for why it is called as the leaf primordia as well because it is from the plumule the shoot develops and the first leaf develops that is why it is called as the leaf primordia so there is one region called as the coleoptile so the coleoptile which protects the plumule as well as the leaf primordia so in monocotyledonous embryo there is an embryonal axis which divides the embryo into two half and there is a structure called as cotyledon which consists which is made up of only one seed and it consists of only one seed leaf and it is called as the scutellum so that is called as the scutellum and it is located on the one side of the embryonal axis and apart from that we have the plumule which is the shoot tip then we have the radical which is the root tip and the coleorhiza which is a protective covering or a sheath that covers the radical and the root cap and we have one more uh, layer called as the coleoptile which is a sheath that protects the plumule and the and the leaf primordia so this is about the monocot embryo so i hope you have understood the session wherein we studied about the events that occur in the post fertilization stages that is in the post fertilization event we studied about how the uh, zygote develops after after double fertilization how the zygote develops then how the uh, endosperm formation occurs and from the zygote how by various divisions how the embryo developmental takes place and when it comes to the embryo we came to know that that the monocotyledonous embryo and the dicotyledonous embryo the parts are the same but when we, uh, but the structure of the monocotyledonous and the dicotyledonous embryo they are different so we studied about all these things so in the next coming session we will study about the seed so once the embryo is formed we can we will have the setting of the seeds so we'll study about the seeds wherein we'll study about epomixes we'll study about dormancy so how the seeds they remain dormant why do they remain dormant all that and also we'll study about the fruit so once the fruit and the seeds are developed the fertilization process is complete or the flower has completed its sexual reproduction so all this will be studying in the coming session so i hope you have understood the session well and we will meet again thank you